Hello, 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 hello. Solutions to our second Archimedes problem. I will give a small introduction for those of you who are not very familiar with Archimedes and may help you to find to understand the final solution. I have here a container and there is liquid in the container. It's not filled to the brim. This object is not there yet. And the mass of the container plus the liquid inside is capital M. I put this whole thing, the liquid and the container, on a bathroom scale and the bathroom scale will indicate mg newton. g is the gravitational acceleration. Now I take an object with volume capital V and mass little m and it will float and I lower it gradually into this liquid. The buoyant force upwards will be exactly equal to the gravitational force down when the net force of the system is zero. The volume of this object that is inside the liquid is not capital V, that's little v. And the buoyant force, according to Archimedes, is rho Vg because rho is the density of the liquid. So rho V is the mass of the liquid that is displaced by this object. And this rho Vg must be the same as mg. Now, now I'm asking the question, what will the bathroom scale indicate? Well, there is a force down, which is the container plus the liquid. The liquid hasn't changed, so that's mg down. But now comes a key point that some of you may have overlooked. If the liquid exerts a buoyant force upwards on this object, according to Newton's third law, the object must exert a force downwards in the opposite direction, action equals minus reaction, with the same magnitude. And so, the forces downwards that the scale will indicate is this capital Mg, but also this rho Vg. And that's Mg. So the weight that the bathroom scale will indicate is capital M plus little m times G. That is totally trivial. Forget Archimedes for now, completely. We first have an object with mass capital M. We add to that object another object with mass little m. So obviously the scale will indicate the sum of the weight of those two. So that is capital M plus little m times G. So this result is trivial. Even though it may be the first time that you realize that if the liquid exerts a buoyant force upward on the object, then the object must exert equal magnitude force downward on the liquid. And that's this force. One step up. I have a container which is completely filled to the brim with liquid. This object is not there yet. And the mass of the container plus the liquid in there is capital M. So, if this object is not there and the whole system is on a scale, the scale will indicate capital M times G. The difference between this M and this M is that here the liquid was not all the way up to the brim, remember? Here the liquid is all the way to the brim. I now take this object with volume capital V, with mass little m, and I slowly lower that into the liquid until, until it comes to a halt. It will come to a halt when the gravitational force down, mg, equals the buoyant force upwards rho Vg. What now will my scale indicate? Well, as we discussed earlier, if the liquid exerts a buoyant force upwards rho Vg, 
on the object, the object must exert on the liquid the same magnitude force in the opposite direction. So this is that rho Vg down. The weight of the container with liquid is now no longer mg because liquid has been spilled out. And the amount of liquid that has been spilled out has a mass rho times little v, not this v, rho times little v. And so the force downwards, gravitational force downwards, is now mg minus rho vg. And what this bathroom scale will indicate is the factorial sum of these two. And what do you see? This one and this one eat each other up. And the weight is again capital MG. And that is not so obvious. It's not something that you would easily have predicted. So, if you have any canister filled to the brim with liquid, and you put any floating object on top, assuming that none of the liquid that spills out will end up on the bathroom scale, all of it comes out outside the bathroom scale, then there will be no change in the weight indicated by the bathroom scale on which the system stands. That is not so obvious. So let's now address the first question of the real problem. In the real problem, we started out with a canister filled to the brim with liquid, total mass capital M density of the liquid rho. We push down into that liquid an object that wants to float. It has the volume capital V and it has mass little m. It wants to float. You can see that here because the buoyant force upwards, which is rho capital Vg according to Archimedes, and the gravitational force down, which is little mg, will make the object go up. This force is larger than this. But now comes Walter Lewin. There is here a very thin rod whose size can be totally ignored in the problem. And with that little rod, I push down on the object to keep it below the surface. So this force is Walter Lewin's force down acting on this object. And the sum of this force, this force and that force is zero. So the net force on this object is zero. What now are the forces acting on the bathroom scale? Well, this buoyant force upwards, action equals minus reaction, is a force downward onto the bathroom scale. We just discussed that. The mass of the container and the liquid inside is now reduced because there is liquid that was spilled out, not on the scale, but that was spilled out. And the mass of the liquid that was spilled out is rho capital V now. And so we have to add these forces factorially, mg minus rho capital Vg plus rho capital Vg. And what do we find? This one cancels this one. And again, you measure capital Mg. Okay? So if I push that one in, I do it slowly. Liquid will spill out, the weight of the bathroom scale will not change. Let's now go to the next question, which is a little harder. So now, again, we have the container filled to the brim with liquid, density rho, and the mass of the liquid plus the container 
is capital M. Forget this for now. It's capital M. This object is now lowered into here. Walter Lewin is not pushing it down to keep it in place, but somehow we manage to attach a string to the bottom of the container and to the object. So the Boolean force upwards, rho capital V G, is larger than M G down of this object. That's where the tension comes in. The tension will hold it in place. So the tension force is in this direction. The sum of these three forces, this one, this one, and this one, is zero. The net force on this object is zero. So the tension down plus mg down is the same as rho capital VG up. Keep that in mind. Now comes the question, what will the bathroom scale indicate? Well, this buoyant force upwards, we discussed this now twice already, is experienced, action equals minus reaction, as a force downward on the scale. So this rho Vg in this direction is rho Vg downwards on the scale. The mass of the canister and the liquid is less than it was before we pushed this object in. Because the liquid been spilled out, and the liquid did not end up on the, on the bath room scale. And so the force due to the remaining liquid and the remaining <laughs> container is M minus this amount times G. This is the loss of liquid which spilled over. But now comes something that some of you may have overlooked. If the string pulls down on this object with tension T, then clearly it pulls up on the bottom of the container with exactly that same tension T. We assume that the mass of that string is totally negligible, so the tension is everywhere the same, but right here it is upwards. So, the weight that the bathroom scale will indicate is now the vectorial sum of this vector, of this vector, and of this vector, which is the tension. And already we have here the equation that tells us that the tension is rho capital Vg minus little mg. This we discussed earlier, and if you now add these all all three up factorially, you will get capital MG minus rho VH, V is the capital V, plus MG. So that's the answer to our second problem. And this is the answer to our first problem. It would make it very easy for me if you accept now my numerical values and forget this Newton thing, <laughs> just let's go back to a civilized bathroom scale as I've had for 30 years in Europe, whereby you measure the mass. Non-Newton, you measure the mass. And the mass is in kilograms. So, if you use this equation, this mass is 5 kilograms. This rho v, if you do your homework on that, is going to be 2 kilograms. And this little m is 1 kilogram. So it is plus 5, minus 2, plus 1, that's 4 kilograms. So in this case, the bathroom scale calibrated in kilograms will indicate 4 kilograms. In this case, it will indicate capital Mg which is 5 kilograms. So, interesting problem. Always comes down to making free body diagrams. 
You can make a free body diagram on the object, volume capital V and mass little m, which we did. And then you have to realize which forces actually act on the bathroom scale. So in the second problem we added this tension thing which you may have overlooked and we added of course action equals minus reaction which is the the buoyant force of the object. I hope you've learned some physics. Of course we'll be friends. Have a nice day and take care.